Hello everyone and welcome back to another Strat Gaming video guide. In today's video, we're going to be covering smithing. Smithing is probably the most complex topic in Bannerlord with over 40 hours of work going into the making of this guide. I'll do my best to condense it down into a palatable format, but be aware that this is much more data driven than my previous guides. And if you somehow stick around until the end of the video, I'll show you my favorite exploit to guarantee that legendary stat roll when crafting your favorite top tier weapons. I've broken this video up into several chapters, so if you're following along, you'll be able to easily navigate through relevant segments. Check down in the description below for the timestamps. With all that being said, I hope you enjoy this guide, and let's get started. You use crafting stamina for every smithing action that you take. Your crafting stamina amount is determined by your level, starting at 100 stamina at level 1 and increasing by 1 every 2 levels to the maximum of 265 at level 330. You regenerate crafting stamina by resting in a town. The amount you recover is percentage based so it will scale with you as you level, meaning you will need the same 75% of a day to recover 100% of your stamina regardless of your level. All refining actions will cost you 6 stamina. Stamina. All smelting actions will cost you 10 stamina. Smithing actions will cost anywhere from 10 up to 45 stamina, depending on the difficulty of the weapon. You can unlock parts by crafting and smelting weapons, or by completing orders. Crafting weapons is the slowest of the three, but you can double the unlock rate with the Curious Smith perk. Smelting weapons is twice as fast as crafting, which you can further boost by 2x with the Curious Smelter perk. Completing orders is 3 to 5 times faster than crafting. After a certain number of unlocks, you will raise your unlock level, which slows down your unlocking progression. The rate at which you unlock parts is not tied to your character's XP gain. You start the game with 27 weapon parts unlocked and there are 1,201 weapon parts total in the game so to unlock everything you need 1,174 parts unlocked. I ran two experiments with the smelting perk on in order to see how unlocking parts works. One with the lowest smelting XP item in the game and another with a top tier weapon. The results are very interesting as you can see from the spreadsheets and graphs. Notice that unlocking 82 parts with pitchforks took us 1,016 pitchforks for 1,016 XP while one single two-hand and its sword gave those same 82 unlocks with 2804 XP. So the XP does not match up between the two, which means unlocking parts does not work in the same way that XP for a character does. Another important note here is that the more parts you unlock, the slower unlocking gets. You unlock parts very fast in the beginning and then you slow to a crawl near the end. We were able to unlock everything with 450 200 swords, which was roughly one and a quarter million XP. You earn smithing XP in four different ways. Refining materials, smelting weapons for parts, smithing new weapons, and fulfilling orders. Remember, all XP values in this guide are given with a 1x multiplier base value. To find out what your character or companion would earn, simply take these XP values and multiply them by your character's XP multiplier, which you can find here on the character screen. If we craft a weapon that gives 1000 XP, then with an XP multiplier of 12.5, we would actually have gained 12,500 XP. Refining materials is the easiest and most predictable way to earn XP through smithing. It's also the slowest, but can still be great in the early game. Let's take a look at the full list. One thing that really jumps out to me is how much XP making 3 charcoal actually gives, especially for a low level character, and you can do it from day 1. Refining is a guaranteed way to get the crafting materials you need, but it's very slow and requires a significant amount of hardwood. For example, to get from crude iron to a single Thamaskeen steel will cost you 31 charcoal. An easier way is to buy Pugio daggers from any empire town or tribesmen throwing daggers from all towns in the game except Valandian and Kazate towns. Smelting can be a great way to gather smithing materials, earn XP, and unlock parts. When smelting a weapon, you will get back all of the materials needed to craft that same weapon, minus one of the highest tier materials, and plus one of the second highest tier materials. So for example, it cost us four Thamaskeen steel and one fine steel to craft this weapon. When we smelt it, we get back three Thamaskeen steel and two fine steel. The XP you earn from smelting a weapon is exactly the same that you earn when you're crafting that weapon. However, you unlock parts at twice the rate of smithing, so smelting can be a great way to unlock parts quickly and cheaply. 
And now for the most important part of the video, the crafting section. There are a few reasons to craft a weapon. For personal or companion use, to sell the weapon for profit, or for XP and part unlocks. In general, the best weapons for use are largely dependent upon personal preference, so we will save that for another video. Crafting weapons for sale is simple. The more XP a weapon generates, the more it will sell for on the market. Given this information, we can conclude that unless you're making a weapon to use, you should only be creating the highest XP value weapons available given your unlocked parts. Let's look at how we can achieve this. To make our life easier, let's filter out the weapons that should be avoided at all costs. Literally everything except polearm and two-handed sword. Here is a list of the highest XP weapon from each category so you can see why we're focusing on these two. From worst to best, starting with the throwing knives. Now one thing that really stood out to me was how crafting materials has no effect on XP. For example, some one-handed swords cost the exact same as a comparable two-handed sword, but the XP for the two-handed sword was three to four times more. We will call this Tail World's Mathematics. Let's now look at an example from each of our top two crafting weapons, starting with the pole arm. For the blade, we choose the tier five long glaive head and max size. For the attachments, we start with the tier five double hooks at full size. The shaft, we use the tier five decorated long pine shaft, keep it at default size. And finally, the pommel, we use the tier five spiked round spear pommel at default size. For the two-handed sword, we start with the tier 5 Themyscene Steel Cascara Blade at max size, the tier 5 Ridged Western Guard at minimum size, the tier 4 Red Leather One-Handed Grip at minimum size, and finally the tier 5 Eagle Head Pommel at minimum size. You might be thinking, well, what do I do if I only have a few parts unlocked and I can't even make those? Well, that's a great question, which leads us to the most important part of this segment. A simple method to crafting no matter how many parts you have unlocked. Step 1. Pick two-handed sword or polearm. Step 2. Pick the highest tier blade you have available that has both long reach and a high swing damage. If it's a polearm, it absolutely must have swing damage. Step 3. Pick all possible components, prioritizing higher tier parts except for a two-handed sword handles. Pick the highest tier that has a one-hand and two-handed option. Step 4. Craft or min-max part sizes. If you opt to min-max, here are some good pointers to keep in mind. Increasing component part size usually increases XP, but there are a lot of cases where it actually lowers it, so you can test them out to see for yourself. Swing damage tends to be the most important stat, but combination of all stats is important. Example, if you gain 5 swing damage, but it costs you 15 in the other stats, like handling, swing speed, etc., then it's going to harm your overall XP. Crafting fine, master, and legendary weapons gives a small boost to XP. Some parts have worse stats, but give higher XP. My guess here is that some parts have an override for the XP given and are not based on the stats of the item. A couple more things that are worth noting. I said to only craft two-handed swords or pole arms, but if you don't have any good parts for those, then you can look at a two-handed axe. It can be a decent alternative for XP if you have tier 5 two-handed axe parts. Also, javelins are now trash to craft unless you have access to the only tier 5 javelin head, and even then you can get better XP for the same material spend with a two-handed sword. If you're looking to be the most efficient with your time and resources, then completing crafting orders is the way to go. Not only can you make a ton of money doing them, but you can potentially get between 4 and 23 times the XP of a single weapon craft. The best part is, you don't even have to be successful with the order to gain these benefits. I love the new crafting order system, and by the end of this segment, I'm confident you will too. Let's take a look at some of the basics. Every town starts with 6 crafting orders available from different nobles and notables ranging in difficulty levels, weapon types, and reward values. You can only attempt a crafting order if you are within 49 levels of the difficulty requirement or higher. In order to succeed with the order, you need to meet or exceed the requirements given. If you fail, you still get full XP and some of the reward money, from 50 to about 10% depending on how far off you are. Completed orders will be replaced with new ones in time. They can come back in batches of one or two orders at a time and can take anywhere from one to three days or sometimes more. Now that we understand the basics, let's look at how we can really take advantage of the order system. There are two ways I personally go about using orders, earning dinars or gaining XP, part unlocks, etc. Earning dinars is very straightforward. Look for orders that have rewards of 30,000 or more and get as close to meeting those requirements as possible. It's not hard to earn at least 50% of the reward money and you can earn millions within a matter of weeks. Some useful information about completing orders for cash. You can ignore weapon weight and weapon reach 
reach, as they don't cause order failure if you don't meet the requirements. Sometimes you can miss difficulty and still pass, and sometimes you can meet all the requirements and still fail. The level 250 perk Sharpened Edge gives a guaranteed swing damage boost, allowing you to make up a deficit of one or two swing damage and succeeding in the order when you would normally have failed. Three perks that give a chance at bonus stat rules, which can help you succeed at orders you would normally fail, and they are Fine Smith, Master Smith, and Legendary Smith. For two-handed swords, always try to meet the thrust pierce damage first. Changing size and components does not change your thrust damage, so you do need the blade to satisfy that at first, and then you build everything else out from there. The second way is much more complex, so let's break it down into more digestible pieces. We're looking for orders that are in weapon categories that give a ton of XP, such as polearm, two-handed swords, and even two-handed axe, one-handed sword, and two-handed mace. Higher difficulty is better, as that will allow us to craft higher XP weapons before we get that huge multiplier applied. Get your weapon difficulty as close to the order difficulty as possible. Don't worry about the other stats, as they only affect the reward money and not the XP gain. You will earn an XP multiplier between 4 and 23 times, with the average coming in at about 11 times. Here are a couple examples that will help demonstrate how powerful this strategy is. We will craft the order and then afterwards show the exact same craft to compare the XP gain difference. The highest XP gain by percentage was from a polearm order. It had an order difficulty of over 200, which is exactly what we like to see. We start off by finding a spearhead that has swing cut damage, then we put on the other parts that will boost up the difficulty and get close to the 203 mark. Notice how far off we are on all the other stats and even below on difficulty. We gain about 20% of the dinar reward, but let's look at the XP gain. We started on level 300 with 0 XP and ended up at level 301 with 32 369 XP. We add in the full XP from level 300, which is 48 180, and we come to a grand total of 80,549 XP gained from this one craft. Now we reload the save, paste the exact same specs of the weapon, and see what XP we would have gotten without the order. We barely gained 33 34 XP, which means we gained a grand total of 2300% in a single crafting order that we failed miserably at. I love this game. The next example we look at is the highest net gain of XP from a crafting order I could get. The crafting order calls for a 234 difficulty weapon, which we will surpass by a little bit. We're able to meet all of the other requirements as well and earn a nice reward. Let's check out the XP gain on this beast. We start out at level 300 with 0 XP and end up at 304 with 16,717 XP. Adding the XP from the gain levels back in, we come to a grand total of 211,307 XP. We reload to reset the XP, paste the weapon in, and craft, resulting in 11,648 XP. This means we gained 1,700% XP over the original. It's not hard to see why orders are the best way to level smithing in the game. We are nearing the end of the video and as promised, I will be sharing with you my favorite exploit that guarantees you to get the legendary roll exactly when you want it. We start out by going to a town and saving the game. If you're in an Iron Man game, then you probably shouldn't be using this exploit. I'm just kidding. Just save and exit to mark the spot, you sexy chad. Get to the crafting screen and begin crafting the cheapest thing you can. Be sure to keep count of how many items you crafted and watch each weapon's stats. In my run, you can see we hit the jackpot on the fifth craft and got a legendary stat roll. We reload the game, craft four throwaway weapons, and save again. Now you have a save where anything you craft next will be 100% guaranteed legendary roll. It seems like Tail Worlds doesn't use an RNG for each instance, but more likely they calculate a string of actions at some point in time and then keep those outcomes saved for the whole game moving forward. I want to thank you all for watching another Strat Gaming video guide. If you like this video, please give a like and subscribe down below. The likes really help out the video with a YouTube algorithm and allow more people to find these guides. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of guide you would like to see. Up next, we will be looking at the cunning skills, scouting, tactics, and roguery, so be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss it. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.